Oh, just delaying same group. Okay, my apologies. A little bit of scatterbrain start to the, uh, the, the the session this week, but nonetheless, ahoy there. Welcome one, welcome all. Uh, Ezekiel, Peter, Steve. Hello, Scott. Hello, Vito. Uh, nice tight crowd uh, to get the session going. Um, right. So we've got a lot of the regular. Actually, we're all coming in drips and drabs. So we'll just. Uh, a little chat, a little hello before we get rocking and a rolling. Um, I wasn't planning on the usual, well, the last few weeks of not, but I wasn't planning on having a kind of central theme. But just before I uh, pressed go on the, the Zoom this week, I was just thinking about like experience because that has been on my uh, mind the last several uh days and one or two of you might have seen uh this um image um that i drew and well i did to be fair it's just a square it's not like it's anything creative <laughs> but it, it's meant to be a representation of across the or down the center you've got this uh, knowledge and uh, through the vertical axis you've got this uh, experience element and it's only when we have this this um, experience combined with some knowledge, and I'm not saying it doesn't have to be a, a, a lot of knowledge, it just needs to be a depth, a focused amount of knowledge. And when you get that, I believe that that's where we live with a profitable strategy, when you've got that combination of two. So then it comes back to the old adage of how do you get experience if you can't get experience, if you've got to wait to get experience, how do you get experience? It's that kind of thought process. It's a little bit of a, uh, a circular thought that brings you back to the being. It's, it's like that, the old adage of how do you get a job if you can't get a How do you get a job to get experience to get a better job if you can't get a job because you've not got experience? It's, it's that sort of bullshit logic. <laughs> so how do we get experience in trading? And I think in the trading context, the trade-off is the thing that I'm completely against, which is railing through chart after chart after chart like a zombie. I think inefficient use of time is what I'm really against there. Just flicking at the, sitting at the charts, aimlessly flicking through charts is a waste of time. So what I thought I'd do was, as a part of our uh, narrative through today's session, is like, how do we speed up the learning curve? and revisit an old lesson it's not the first time i've done this but just try and revisit a lesson um of how to get experience fast without waiting six months to get six months experience and it, the, the the result might surprise you some of the old uh, hands will be will have seen this before but it's always an interesting exercise when we do it anyway now we're all kind of uh, stepping in uh, the usual agenda, if you're on here, see there's one or two new names. Welcome, 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 welcome. And lots of old faces, which is great to see. The usual session goes a little slant like this. We're going to spend 20 to 30 minutes talking about usually a narrative that I've got run through my head. It's going to be uh, how do we get experience fast is kind of what I'm thinking, uh, as I just mentioned. Uh, and usually we spend up to about 60 minutes. We shouldn't go more uh, than 60. Occasionally we will dip over, it depends on how chatty I'm feeling, but ultimately we'll be looking at the markets, the portfolio, and, and again, this, this week's theme or narrative is going to be how do we get experience fast without wasting time? How do we be efficient with our time? Because for me, time is the most precious thing that I've got. So if you are new, my name's Phil Newton. I've been trading for a little while. I've coached and mentored a lot of people over almost three decades, uh, from traders all the way through to banks, hedge funds, owners, institutions. Uh, I've coached uh, uh, two generations of uh, mentors. Uh, a lot of people you may have heard of uh, who my non-disclosure agreement prevents me from mentioning. Uh, but ultimately, I don't consider myself a guru. I didn't work on the street. I've not worked on Wall Street or Fleet Street in the UK. I'm just a regular guy who figured a few things out. Uh, my background is a sub story. Um, I was uh, quite literally on my deathbed back in the early noughties and um, you know, questioning the meaning of life. And I got a second chance at it and I want to embrace it. Uh, in my case, I was housebound for three or four years uh, after on you know, the, the major instance, as it were, and on the road to recovery. And the only thing that I could do was plug into the matrix that we call the Internet and find a way to make money online. Um, I was fortunate to have been on the journey of the stock market thing since I was about 15. 
And I, it, in my case, it was a back to the wall scenario. I had to make it work. Uh, and that's what I did. Again, I took the knowledge that I'd been applying and learning from textbooks back then to make it work. And, and that, that's really kind of like my sob story. But fast forward 27 years, um, fully recovered, thankfully, still uh, health issues and bouts. It's an ongoing thing, but I want to spend as little time as possible um, at the uh, at the computer. And that, that's kind of like the influence of where production line trading comes from. Morning, Glenn. Morning, uh, Randall. Just in the comments. That's kind of like where the influence of this comes from. I want to be efficient with the time because... It is time is precious, and I think when we've all had a near miss, um, or we've got other things to do with our lives, then we want to be as efficient as possible. But we shouldn't sacrifice the the quality of what we're doing with the efficiency of what we're doing. So, um, what I try and do with these free sessions, the open hour sessions, is to be your personal mentor. Uh, every week, I try and give you some insider information that the the, chip, the tips, the tricks, the uh, the shortcuts. I'm reluctant to say the word hack because I think that these days has got a, a different connotation to what it originally meant. But we're just trying to find like, how do we accelerate the learning? How do we accelerate the curve so that we can profit from swing trading and create wealth and basically just live our best life? And, and that's pretty much where I'm at. You know, I, I figured it out um, uh, very fast. Uh, and just a little bit of a sidebar, again, some of the, the, the old hats and the new hats might have heard me uh, say this in the last sort of uh, uh, 24, 48 hours, but uh, I had a realization about two weeks ago, and and I don't I, it was one of those things that I, I knew and had been saying for years, and I articulated it in this particular way. And the way I usually phrased it, and for anyone who has worked with me or has spoke to me on the phone, I often find myself saying, you don't need to know anything more. You don't need to know anything new. You just need to know what to do with what you do know. And then refining that thought, my realization was what we see on the screen there. There's no, there is no better way to learn how to trade than to watch somebody who's already doing it trade, or in this case, how to uh, manage a portfolio by watching a portfolio being managed. You know, it's a, uh, and of course that's the, the, the case type of situation. So that, that was kind of like my realization. And I've always done it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but recently I started a group program. I won't belabor that point right now, uh, but that ultimately was my personal realization that, you know, you've got to follow the right person for you. I'm not pretending that like I'm the right person for everyone, but you've got to find the right person for what you're looking for. Um, and the quite the fastest way to get that success that you're looking for is to follow in the footsteps of someone who's doing what you're aspiring to do. And I don't mean make money from the stock market. I mean, maybe it's day trading. I can day trade. I've done it plenty. I did a day trading room for free while we were in lockdown for eight months. And all it did was serve to remind me of why I hate day trading. I don't want to do it. So I'm not the person for day trading. I am good at it, but I do rail against it. Just bear with me one moment, folks. The, uh, Door, the postman's just knocked twice at the door. Bear with me. If you get the reference, let me know. Oh, thanks for your patience, folks. Uh, life happens. Life happens. So postman has delivered. The, <laughs> postman knocked twice. Anyway, um, so th this was my personal realization. So I think if on your journey, again, a little bit uh, deep in my own thoughts this week, but on your journey to your trading success, where I am, again, fast forward 30 years, it's like the chart pattern is the least important thing. And a big part of the journey for you as a trader and finding your perfect strategy is figuring out what works for you. And that, that makes it difficult because there's a lot of strategies, there's a lot of educators out there, a lot of mentors out there that are they're really good. They are really good. But it's finding that one that resonates with you. And that's what I did in my own journey. Whenever I've learned something, I've found someone who I felt I could relate to. And I think that's probably the best advice when you're looking for help, when you're looking for an educator, when you're looking for a mentor. And I think the other kind of tip that I would suggest as well is um, look for someone who's a trader first and an educator second, as opposed to an educator first and a trader second. You know, I, I know there's a subtle distinction, but it's a very distinct difference uh, in those two things. I've always said I'm a trader first, 
Uh, I am the type of person that likes to stop tourists. I enjoy these sessions. Um, I do them free. I do them uh, for hire uh, in group sessions at the moment. And I enjoy doing them, but I am a trader first and foremost. And all I'm doing is teaching you the byproduct of my own system. And anyway, a little bit uh, thoughtful this week. Um, appreciate that uh, some of you are not here. Just show me the charts, Phil. <laughs> I understand that you want to do that. Anyway, it worked. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, despite my ruminations and ramblings, uh, I've got lots of uh, people who are able to get results. Again, these are just from the last few weeks. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that is the most important thing for me, that all of this can be replicated. Uh, otherwise, you know, why call it production line trading? Why um, call it anything like that at all? Anyway, with that said, let's go look at the charts. That's all. That's why we're all really here, despite my uh, ruminations of um, uh, good intention. Do, 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 do. Right. All right. So let's think about, um, let's just take a little look at the markets and then what we'll do is we'll look at how to speed up the learning curve. We might have to wait about 20 minutes, uh, mainly because we need the market to be open. That's always useful <laughs> um, to, to, sh to show you what I'm gonna do. We can do it on other instruments and other markets. So we'll, if, um, if we get going, we'll have a look on the futures markets. Uh, it shouldn't make too much difference, but you'll see what I mean when we get there. Uh, as usual, the thing that I'm often looking at first, and I normally do this on my mobile phone, is to look at the watch list on the left. Again, on my mobile phone, it's going to bring up the watch list. And what I'm often looking at is the percentage. Again, the market's just about to open. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes before we go. I'm five hours ahead in the UK. So what I'm often looking at is, like, is there a big movement? Not necessarily as a point value, as a percentage value. I'm looking for, is there anything moving and shaking during the Asian session, the European session, that might mean that well, actually the US session could be a little bit moving and a little bit shaking as well. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, despite that at the moment, there's very little activity at the moment. And this observation, this low volatility, we've got this price compression there, we've got this low volume. And one of the things that we observed in our little insiders community is um, just all the times that I'm just looking for those little clusters of five, six bars that are just all really narrow and tight. You kind of see them before there's a big volatility swing. Uh, and it could be a one day swing. That's what we've seen at the moment. But just those big swings didn't quite happen there. But then you get the, the, the big volatility moves. And it's usually um, prefaced by you know, these clusters of uh, bars. And one of the things that we noted uh, before the big kahuna um, uh, back in back back in 2020, I sound like an old, old folk, you know, back in 2020 before the big one, uh, for anyone who's been following me for any length of time, you would have heard me talking about it. We were observing the same thing. You know, we're looking for cyc cyclical and seasonal patterns. We've got those uh, sell-offs, again, that we were uh, expecting or talking about. We'd get these clusters of nothing for a week or two or three, and then it would be wallop, uh, clusters of two, three days, and then wallop, clusters of two, three days, and then uh, the big one. Now, I wasn't expecting a big one. We can't forecast it. I, I certainly thought that from a, a cyclical point, point of view, um, we were due a corrective move. I just didn't know the market was going to crash. No one can predict those sorts of things. The whole definition of a black swan event is that it is a black swan event. Uh, but nonetheless, we've spoken on previous uh, sessions that the market swings in cycles. It's got seasonal uh, ebbs and flows. And all I'm pointing out at the moment is that footprint before the seasonal cycle kind of swings back and forth or rocks back and forth, maybe for a few days. So we might just see the same thing that we saw before the big sell off. Again, if you want to go back and look at 2020, January, February, March, you would see clusters of days where nothing happened and then big sell off. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. So one would have to presume that as we're seeing these clusters of sideways price activity for you know one to three weeks, we've got to presume that there may well be a big-ish retracement. Is there going to be a crash? I don't know. No one knows for certain, but I've got to presume that history repeats itself, and that's what I'm looking at right now. So we've got this footprint, and it, in, in fairness, it's a discretionary footprint, 
but it's a footprint nonetheless. So we've got to presume that that's going to happen. Now, a couple of weeks ago, some of you may recall when we were talking about um, the cyclical uh, swings in price. And if you look at the seasonal behavior, uh, do, do, one of the things that we've observed again back then and right now is, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, uh, the, the correction is coming. It's always coming, I think was the title. But February, March, we normally see uh, a 10% move in 10 days. And September, uh, October is the other time. So there's two times of year where we see a 10% down in 10 days. It's August, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. We're getting close. Um, so prior to that, we might see a seasonal upswing, which is what we'd normally see. Kind of like to fake all the buys in. If you want to put some context to it, maybe it's just that end of summer season rally, the end of summer season breakout. There's all the holidaymakers, if anyone's on holiday at the moment, but if all the holidaymakers come back to the office environments, the, the hedge fund, the banks, the owners, the institutions, they're coming back to the desk after a summer period break. That should create some liquidity. Maybe it just drives the market briefly higher. Summer, end of summer rally. Again, it's a seasonal thing. Go and look it up. You don't have to take my word for it. And that might just get all the, the Johnny One lots, the retail traders in, so the institutions can unload and get out. Um, and that could then send us into that September sell-off that we're seeing right now. But if you want to go and study the footprints, the, the clustering and sell off and the clustering and the sell offs that I'm, that I'm trying to describe. Go look at January, February, March, just before the 2020 sell off. You'll see exactly the same thing. Go and look back in 2019, you'll see the same thing. And uh, I think 2018 it happened twice at the beginning and the end of the year in that time period. But you can go back over the last 20 years and you'll see this clustering before the corrective move. Occasionally it's associated with a crash. I've just quantified it as 10% in 10 days, a fast move in a, in a short period of time um, is all I'm saying there. So, so that's just an observation that I'm making. Again, just to reinforce, is a discretionary observation? But when you start to observe these things, they become obvious because you'll see it time and time again. This isn't the first time I've seen such things. So this is why I'm last several weeks been more vocally bearish than I have been previously. Um, but that said, uh, maybe just explaining why uh, why I think that. Now, it's not, it's not unique to a daily chart. So let's pop the daily chart. And this might be a nice segue into, uh, this might be a lovely segue into the kind of the narrative that I wanted to discuss, which is, okay, that, that, that all sounds great, Phil. You've got a discretionary viewpoint. Great, I'm happy for you, but I'm brand new or I'm newer end of the spectrum or insert your reason for not seeing it. I don't have the experience, generally speaking. So how do you get experience without looking at the charts for 30 years? How do you do that? Well, here's the cheat code. Here's, here's the cheats. We're going to change the time frame. Now, I'm going to change the time frame. And bear in mind, we're 10 minutes before the market opens. So I'm doing this on SP futures. You can do this on any stock, any instruments, any markets. It works fine. What we do need is liquidity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to, I might have to change it to uh, two or three ticks, actually. So let's just put 10 ticks on for now. So a tick is the minimum price movement. Oh, God, oh, God almighty. That looks awful. Um, a tick is the minimum movement. I think what I'll do is I'll change it to seconds that we could do. So all I'm going to do, let me just get the settings up. All I'm going to do is look at seconds and I'm just going to put a five second chart on. So if we ignore the time frame for a moment and pretend that this is a daily chart, think about this like it's, it's a, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Again, you know, now we've put this on, this could be the daily chart we just looked at. This could be the, the 2020 uh, low right there, <laughs> the big sell-off, the rally back, the, the January, February consolidation. I don't know if anyone can see that, but, but let's do that. Let me just take a screenshot. That could almost be, I didn't plan that, honestly. I mean, it's a five second chart, folks. Let's just go back to the daily for a second. Can everyone see that? It was almost like, wind back the hands of time. It was almost like that segment of the chart. Almost like that. 
sorry, am I, am I just nerding out for a second? <laughs> Let me know if you see it, folks. Let me know if you see it. Let me just get the, um, did you see it? Oh, okay. da, da, da. Let's put them side by side. It's almost like, it's all, so this is the, the uh, five second chart. This is the daily. Yeah. And it's almost like it was, there's the crossover. There's the rally. There's the rally. There's the consolidation. There's the consolidation. There's the breakouts. There's the breakouts. Can everyone see that? Like, I, 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 am, I, am I the only one that sees this? Like, let me know I'm not crazy, folks. But this is, this for me just reinforces. Let me just try and, this for me reinforces. Like, I'm just trying to label them. Uh, so we've got three there, four. So that's there. And then we've got a question mark here. So this is what I call spot the difference. Yeah, I am crazy. <laughs> I am crazy, Glenn. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, everyone said I'm crazy. <laughs> you all know me too well. I am batshit crazy. I've got no issues with that. You know, I came to terms with my uh, silliness a long time ago. Um, but th this is what I call spot the difference. You've heard me talk about this. So I think it's a good fight. Just literally the first time we did it before the market opens. I mean, bear in mind, this is a five second chart. I could not have predicted this 10 minutes ago. It's a five second chart. But we've got this continuity between timeframes. And you've got to, as a trader, we've got to buy in to history repeats itself. Otherwise, why are we doing this? Why are we looking at the chart in the first place? If you don't believe that history repeats itself, you should never look at the chart. You've got to believe at some level that there is some cyclicality, seasonality, patterns that can keep unfolding again and again. And this is just an observational pattern. You could overlay, you could overlay the charts up to where are we? This part of the chart looks like uh, this up to about there. It looks the same part. So what we can do is we can start saying things like, okay, well, if that's what happened last time afterwards, then we've got to presume that something similar would happen again. So is anyone up for in the, in the first half hour, it may have already happened because it was a five-second chart we were looking at. We're going to go back to it in a moment. But is anyone up for a new, new all-time high in the first half hour? Because that's what this pattern suggests. Is anyone, because, and we're basing it off the presumption that history repeats itself. That's what happened last time. Now let's look at the magnitude. The magnitude of movement was about that. Looking at the daily charts, it did about the same. So let's do that. So it did about that corresponding the same part. So, so we're looking for an equal move from one part to this. So that should take us to a new high. So this is, again, I call it spot the difference. Remember those games used to play that we've got a completed picture in the background on the daily charts. We've got a partially completed picture in the foreground, which is a screenshot. And all we're trying to do is fill in the blanks, spot the difference. Well, the, we've got a completed picture. Where are we? If we were to overlay that there, I am crazy, but it's almost not quite. It's not, I, I've got to admit, it's not quite, but it's it's almost exactly the same. So we've got to make the presumption. So this is how we can start to speed up the learning curve. I've now got a hypothesis, working hypothesis, that we're going to see something like this happen on the five second chart. So let's go back to the five second chart. It may have already happened. Yeah, it's five second shots. <laughs> it happens really fast. So just so you can see the settings, there we go. Second chart, five seconds. It's going to look back over the last day. Let's click OK. Again, what we're looking for, da -da, it's already started. There we go. So we're looking for, so there's our picture. We're looking for a similar movement, that sort of magnitude of movement. So from uh, 421, 26. So we're looking for, so that is a five point move. So I'll be expecting another five points. So we're looking for four, four, three. Oh, so we're looking for a 44, 30. Five points in this market's not that much. It'll probably do it at the open. But nonetheless, we've got a five-point move on the S&P. I'd be like 50 Dow points. 
just to put it into context. So you've got a, a comparative. So we've got a hypothesis that history repeats itself. So let me pause there before I actually talk about the thing that I want to talk about. That was just a, a, a very happy random accident. Hist Does everyone believe that history repeats itself, not just on a chart, but across time frames? Can everyone? I'm shaking my hands around. <laughs> Does everyone get that? <laughs> we just got a perfect example of it. History has got to repeat itself. Now, let's just be deep for a moment. Why does history repeat itself? It's got nothing to do with the stock price. If anything, this year has taught us that the underlying stock, the business, has got very little to do with price behavior in the short term. And this year has proven that. So what drives prices? It's essentially people. What we are looking at when we think about why history and patterns and price analysis works is on liquid instruments, meaning they're reasonably tradable. I only look at liquid stocks, anything that's traded more than a million shares on average in a day on a long-term period. That's normally what I'm looking for. That's what I'll quantify as liquid. But what we're looking at is a visual representation of crowd psychology. So when you've got a liquid, highly tradable, highly traded instrument, you are seeing the behavior of quite literally random people around the world these days, influencing, influencing the markets. And independently from each other, but collectively, they're all making similar decisions. And that creates trends, that creates patterns. And those patterns create self-fulfilling prophecies as more traders recognize behaviors that they like and they look to trade those trends or trade those patterns. We might call one of them buy the dip. So as we recognize what we quantify as buy the dip, so segueing nicely into our um, strategy, we can use our production line process for the classic trend. We are looking for an average price crossover. We're looking for at least 40 bars in trend. We're looking for it to be actually moving. As we're looking at the chart, we can see visually, guess what? It's moving. And then what we're going to do is, number four, we're going to quantify that any retracement below the 50 period move on average is a buyable dip. So that's the 50. So price needs to rally, retrace back to the move and average. There's a Bible dip there. Rally retracements. There's a Bible dip there. Rally retracements. We've got a Bible dip right here on the live part of the charts. So as we're looking at a five second chart, how long do you have? Do you have 20 minutes to sit here and watch in real time the strategy that you want to use unfold in real time? Because... Looking back through historical charts is great up to a point. And the question that we started our session off with was, how do I get real-time experience? Because if you, the only way that you can get experience is to have a viewpoint like we did. We, we made an observation and see if it comes true. And if it's, coming, if it's not coming true nine times out of 10, you're probably doing something wrong. Your application of a strategy may be incorrect. But if you've got 20 minutes and you can sit in front of the chart and when the market opens, we can drop down to a two second chart. It's going to be super fast. But we, what we get to do, oh, the market's just opened. What we get to do is we get to follow a process, a trading style, a trading strategy, or maybe you're developing something. Now, I'm just going to stick with the buy the dip, the classic trade, the trend strategy. And I'm going to look for a... Uh, a Bible opportunity. Again, this is on a fast time frame. This is a five second chart. I'm not actually going to trade this. I just want to be very clear. This is to help answer the question, how do I get experience fast relative to the stress that we look at and go through most weeks by looking and scanning for opportunities? I'm going to wait for price to go back above the 50 period moving average. And that's going to be telling me that, you know what, that dip, that retracement that took me, well, now below the 200 period moving average, it's going back above the, the 50. Maybe I can trade the next pullback and I can call that a Bible dip. The dip is the, the move below the moving averages. As it moves back higher, 
I can look for an entry, either just go long is what I normally do on a daily chart and teach most of my traders. But if you want to be a little bit more conservative, because maybe you, maybe that's what you want to do, you can trade the next pullback. So here we go. Here's our Bible dip. Again, remember, we're looking for our target. Our hypothesis was this is going to go to 44.30 at the open. What do you think? So can we get experience fast? Now, if we were on daily charts and we're paper trading and trying to get experience and understand, there we go, 4.30, binged. So what we're trying to what we're trying to do is we're trying to speed up the learning curve as fast as possible by going from a daily chart and dropping down to, in this case, a five second chart. Again, I don't plan on trading it. And if you're brand new, I would certainly wouldn't recommend it. It's a heart attack sport. But what it allows you to do is to speed up the learning curve, speed up the learning curve. So that when you go back to the time frame that you do want to trade, you've probably, I mean, let's, let's put it into context. If we've got five second charts, so what's this? In the last 10 minutes, how many bars have we seen in the last 10 minutes on five second charts? 30, 40, 50 bars, 60 bars. If we were to do that on a you know, daily chart, that's two to three months. You've got to paper trade for two to three months on one stock just to see if your hypothesis unfolds, just to see if the strategy does what you want it to do. But when you drop down to a lower time frame, in this case, a super fast time frame, it's five seconds. We can go three, we can go two, we can go one. We can speed that time frame up to anything that we want, but it allows us to get experience fast. Now we've got another Bible dip. So there's our big rally. It's coming back to the 20 period moving average. I'd like to come back to the 50 period moving average. So we've got a weight situation. Our first objective of uh, 430 was met, which is right there. So we want to see price retrace, ideally back to the 50 period moving average. And again, it's dynamics. That 50 period moving average could catch up. Uh, so as price just meanders sideways, you know, we could see the average price catch up. So, and that's what's that's what we're seeing right now. So to get this experience on a daily chart, watching it one day at a time. It can be quite disheartening. I'm, I'm sure everyone will agree. It's, it can be quite disheartening when you're trying to understand a strategy and you're trying to get experience. But if you just follow one stock or one trade or one setup to its natural conclusion, come back and sit, come back in two months, in three months, in four months, in six months. You know, it, it's it's disheartening when you're trying to get experience. Again, like we started off at the beginning of the um, the session, you know, how do you, you know, with the job example, you how do you how do, you can't get a job without experience. You can't get experience without without a job. So how do you get a job with out experience so that you can get experience to get a better job? You know, it's just circular bullshit logic. So this is this is the solution for trading. How do we get experience without sitting in front of our idealized trading time frame, the daily charts. Because again, remember, I want to trade the daily chart. I don't want to day trade. I hate day. I've got to admit, I, I dislike day trading. I've got ways of doing it. Um, I did it in eight months during lockdown. It's not my favorite activity. I spent 12 years doing it. I'm, I am very good at it. But it, what I realized is I don't like doing it. <laughs> um, so we can drop down to those five second charts. And that's what we've got. We've now got multiple comparatively it's a it's kind of like a comparative experience if i was doing this on the uh the daily chart then you know we're, we've got six months of experience of looking at a chart and making real-time decisions as i'm doing this in five to 15 minutes we've got a lot of experience making real-time decisions and i think the key emphasis here should be real-time decisions because you can look back through a stock and you can do walk forward and there's certain stocks that will walk forward and do this exercise one bar at a time. But it's undeniable that you would probably have seen that chart at some points. So it's not a true, I don't know what happens next. This is quite literally live. I don't know what's happened. I've not looked at the chart beforehand to kind of figure out a perfect narrative. All I'm trying to do is say, this is a really good way to get fast 
real-time experience. I want to say real-time experience. You've got to have a strategy to test or maybe a tool to use. We're using moving averages uh, because that's the strategy for that I interpret as the classic trend. And now we've got that deeper retracement. Cool. Let's a little bit of patience. Again, bear in mind, if we were on the daily chart, that's three months later. You know, you've got to wait three months for that retracement to unfold. And all we've had to do is wait two or three minutes. So we've got a retracement. Again, I'd like to see it come back to the 200. If it doesn't come back to the 200, I want to see it go back above the 50. I'm just keeping it nice and loose and simple. Now I can apply a little bit of common sense here. That was the previous breakout. We know that this was when the market opens. So we could possibly call that a news event. You know, we could say that, that you know, on a daily chart, that might be an earnings announcement. You know, that, that sudden influx of volatility, the volume influx. So we've got that volatility event, let's call it that, the market open, and it broke to a new high. It went through it like a hot knife through butter. So let's call that resistance. Prior resistance could be support. It's about the 200 period move on average. So let's say that our support level, our Bible zone, is where we are right now. So what do I want to see next? Well, I can use an entry pattern. I'm going to be looking for uh, uh, this inverted V-shaped pattern or a pyramid type pattern. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for that type of setup. So we've got the rally. We've got the left side. I want to see price sell off. And then I'm going to use the apex as an entry. This is a price action entry. So if I want to refine my entry, I can do so that's what I'm waiting for. So I'm now trying to visualize what needs to happen next that will provide an entry for me. Or I can be conservative and say, you know what? I'll wait for it to go above the 50 period move and average. So that's what we're waiting for. There we go. There's the left side. There's the right side. There's a little teeny tiny apex. So let's call it um, uh, 44.30. So if it goes above 44.30, let's just give it a, a tick for a wiggle room. Bear in mind, it's a five second chart. The scale looks um, bigger than, uh, smaller than what it actually is. So let's call 44.30 as a trigger point to get in. I'm trading the trend. So I'm always going to look for a retest of the recent high. Let's look for 44.33 as a first target. Is there a second target? I'm just going to look back and see what it did last time. Well, what it did last time was 25 to 33. So it did eight points last time. So maybe it's going to do eight points this time. So 28 to 33 is uh, five points. So another three. So uh, next target's going to be 44.36. So I'm going to look for a new high, and then I'm going to look for that 44.36. So if it happens, great. Stop loss, obviously, we're, we're on futures, so let's put a stop loss in place. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to place a stop loss right there. Is everyone happy with that? Does that make sense? Everyone kind of seeing what we're doing here? Trying to trade the chart on steroids. We're applying the same strats that I teach you every Friday. We're going into a little bit more detail with entry patterns. Um, but this is how we can get experience fast. Now we're just waiting. Will it go up? Will it go down? If it goes up, where's my target? If it goes down, I'll be waiting for the trend to change. I don't need to worry about it right this second. But does anyone have any questions on what we're doing? This is how we get experience fast. This is what I'm teaching you every week um, over my shoulder uh, in these open sessions. Uh, I've restarted it in uh, Monday and Wednesday. I'm normally doing this with swing trading. Again, the, the, the five second chart is just for illustration. Because if you've got a 20 minute window to look at the live, live markets, this is a great way that you can speed up your learning curve. So for the sake of, well, what are we on now? We're on 20 minutes now. We've seen, we've got uh, one set of ones in the, uh, in the bag. And we've got a second one that we're live on. How good's this? How do you get experience fast without sitting at the charts for 12 months, watching two stock charts, and then after 12 months saying that this is a scam, it's bullshit, it doesn't work. This is how you do it. This is how you practice the arts of trading. This way of doing it, there's a little bit of extra uh, dimension of discretion, but this is how you gain confidence in your viewpoints, in your trades, in your strategy, in your interpretation of the chart. Are you seeing things right? Yes or no? If yes, put the trade on. Now, again, I just want to reinforce, this is a five-second chart. Practically, I'm not going to trade this. This is just to gain experience fast. I would recommend this to a lot of newer traders but it just means that you can speed up the learning curve. And in fairness, if you want to trade it, there's nothing wrong with it, but let's face it. Do you want to be sat here all day, every day doing this? I spent 12 years doing it. It's not pleasant after a certain period of time. 
as I mentioned before, I was reminded of that earlier with um, uh, the eight months during lockdown of day trading the open. And it was only day trading the open on stocks. It was wonderful. It was great. It was hugely profitable, but it was unpleasant. It was unpleasant. Um, this is a little bit of fun. Obviously, there's no pressure. I've not got a real trade on. Just want to uh, disclose that. But it follows the exact process that I'm teaching you with swing trading stocks over the shoulder, uh, just in the context of fi a five second chart on futures. It's exactly the same process. Nice to have a second one under the belt. So, two, what have we got? 10 points. Oh, what is it? Um, eight points on the first move. And again, it's almost at 44.33 four, targets. Any questions, comments, observations? Is this resonating? Let me know what your thoughts are. Does it make sense for you how to get experience fast? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for your comments, folks. Thanks for your comments. Awesome. I think the the thing that, that that comes out of this is you don't need huge levels of complexity. You don't need huge levels of complexity. When you understand a principle based approach of uh, trading, oops, my widget's crunched. Uh, principle based approach of trading stocks. Let's go back to the daily charts. You understand the principles of what you're doing. Uh, it becomes so much easier. So what did, what have we done? Uh, mechanical, there's no mechanical scan in this case. From the point of view, I'm not scanning for stocks, but there is a mechanical process that goes into the evaluation. I'm looking for, as we said, the average price. Let's get my drawing tool. Uh, the average price going up. It needs to be in trend for about 40 days. So the first thing that we did, although we weren't scanning for a stock, we just said, this is the stock I'm going to, this is the chart I'm going to trade uh, for practice. And again, we did um, the average price crossed over. We did in trend for 40 days. Uh, we did, it was visually, it needed to be going up. Uh, we kind of jumped over to there and we were looking for retracements below the uh, the 20 or the 50 period moving average. That's what we normally look for. That's the, the process. And if you remember, for anyone who's been with me uh, for any length of time, um, we normally use Twitter as our guideline, guiding line for finding uh, or, or our, our footprints, if you like, of what a classic trend looks like. So all we were doing is we were doing the mechanical evaluation and the visual confirmation at the same time. So all we needed to do was wait for the retracements in the context of the trend that we'd identified. We had a hypothesis that it would move higher based on a pattern, a blueprint, visual confirmation, blueprints that we'd seen and noted on the daily S&P. We were looking for history to repeat itself. That's what a money-making pattern is. And then we went and put a trade on. Again, it was only a hypothetical. Uh, but as price proves itself to move back higher, in this case, it's just simply as it goes above the 50 period move and average, we're going to get in the trade. If it goes past the recent lows, we're going to place a stop loss, um, entries, exits, stops and targets on the management side. So, I, you know, we can work out where we're getting in, where we're getting out if it's not working out the right way. We don't really need to worry about a timeout um, just because... I usually focus on stock options for that. Again, it was on a five second chart. So the time element probably wasn't a major consideration. If you were day trading at the end of the day, um, if you're uh, day trading the open, if you're trading gapping stocks, maybe you're, you're restricted to the first hour. There is usually a time element. So again, on futures, probably not that um, important. But you know, is it going to time out? Is it going to target out? Is it going to exit out? You know, what's the plan for that trade? So when you've got a framework to follow, it shouldn't really matter a great deal what the instrument is, what the, the narrative is, what the fundamentals are, whether the stock's gapping or not gapping, whether it's explosive or not explosive, because it's going to fit into a strategy, a blueprint, a process. Again, I refer to mine as a production line. Uh, and the hard thing for, for those new traders to get to grips with is that experience thing. So hopefully what you've seen today is 
that how do I get experience fast? How do I get experience fast? And do do uh, using a logical systematic approach to find opportunities because what we don't want to do is be a zombie trader. Um, I did have a where's Wally hat because <laughs> what we don't want to do is that stock market equivalent of where's Wally. So I'll have to dig that slide out. Now then, I'm pretty much uh, I'm pretty much finished a little bit early today. Um, what I would like to do is if you if anyone wants to sign off and go about their daily routine, please feel free to. Uh, but what I'd like to talk about for the next five or so minutes is a, a new uh, over the shoulder trading room. I mentioned it earlier. I do and have started or restarted more specifically uh, an over the shoulder swing trading uh, room where you know, you can get group mentorship. So if you want to step away, if you don't want to hear about that, that's cool. I just want to kind of make sure that the right people are listening to this. I just want to, you won't be missing any of the the uh, the charting and the technical analysis stuff that we do. Uh, but if you want to stay around and learn a little bit about it, I'll just give you a moment while I take a glass, uh, drink of water. And if you'd like to hear about that, please feel free to stay around. It'll take about three or four minutes just for me to go through. And if uh, you do step away, I'll see you all uh, next week. And that's code for I'm going to take a quick drink while people step out or not. Awesome, awesome, awesome. See, there's a few people here. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying just a little bit longer. So you've heard me mention uh, many times over the uh, days, weeks, months, years, uh, and even today, um, I refer to what I do as production line trading. Um, and I had, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a realization that most people probably don't need another course. And I've said it for years to many people. You probably don't need another course. What you probably need is a mentor. So my question to you is, are oh, you seeing experience, but not seeing results? Because that this was my realization. A lot of people have market experience, but they don't have the results to go along with them. And a lot of people have been trying to figure it out for a year or three years, maybe longer. Maybe it's been 20 years or more. I have worked with people who've been trying to figure it out for 20 or 30 years before they actually get some sort of help from me. They, and then they start getting the results or start seeing the results that they wanted. Now, as I mentioned, the good news is that you probably don't need another course because you have the knowledge already. You just need to know what to do with what you know so that swing trading can finally work for you. And again, this is why I keep referring to it as production line trading. All we need to do is organize the knowledge into a logical sequence of events that makes the most sense. And again, we just went through a perfect example of that. Now, I think I mentioned earlier, again, if you missed it, one of the things that uh, we all do is trades. This grid represents uh, knowledge and experience. So through the center, we have uh, the knowledge elements. You know, we've got the novice on the left. We've got experience charter on the right. And at the this bottom center, we've got this um, uh, experience and consistency. And then at the top center, we've got, uh, you know, consistency and experience. So where... Most people, most novice traders experience is in this bottom left quadrant, we have this lack of results, lack of experience, lack of knowledge, and that gives us some sort of lack of results. And that's fine. We all start there. I started there, you started there, we all start there. But at some point, we start to get a little bit of beginner's look. Maybe we step into that mixed result. So as we gain some uh, experience, we move away from that beginner's look and into that mixed results. And often what we'll find is that we'll flip back and forth between the mixed results uh, side of things because we've not got that consistency. We might have the knowledge, we're all the way over here, but we don't have the consistency, that mastery of um, applying what we know in the most logical sequence. And that's normally the sticking point. So where I want to be and where I believe I am, and hopefully I've proven it over the many years I've been doing these sessions, is we're in the top right-hand side of this quadrant. You know, we've got um, knowledge, we've got experience, and we don't necessarily need to have a lot of knowledge. As we just saw in my live walkthrough not five minutes ago, you don't need to know a lot of things to make a trading strategy. You just need to understand what order of sequence to do it in. So as long as you've got the right knowledge and the right order, then you can gain that consistency and start to get those big results that we're all looking for. So that's what I want to try and uh, illustrate to you. And the way that I do this is with production line trading. 
Uh, I usually focus on swing trading stocks, although you can see that the process that we looked at earlier can be applied to any chart, any time frame, any market, any instruments. I want to focus on uh, stocks, US stocks. Um, the first step of the process is a mechanical scan, a mechanical evaluation. We then want to visually confirm what we're expecting to see. I've got six money-making blueprints that guide me through that process. And if I don't see it, we don't do anything. And as you saw earlier, we waited for the, the optimal moments to make a decision. And then when we've got that decision, we can start to apply the, the timing elements, the targeting elements, the exit elements, the trade management elements. And that means that we can be in that top right-hand corner of our uh, production line process. So as I mentioned, you just need to know what to do with what you know so that it works. We're not waiting 20 years. It should work right now. And specifically, if you want to work with me over the next 90 days, then that's great. Um, we all know it's the fastest way to get mastery is to get help from someone who is already where you want to be. And if you think I'm that person, then that's great. That's why you've all stuck around uh, and just hear these final words. So production line training, what is it? There's no better way to learn how a portfolio is being managed than to see how portfolio is being managed. This was my realization earlier. So uh, last week we opened the doors to over the shoulder mentorship. Um, you get live trading uh, and education and training. Uh, there is a, a slight education element to it because I appreciate that there may be a few blanks that need to be filled in, but that's probably all it is. Um, but we have live training so that you can see how it's applied in real time. There's a quick start blueprint training, which is just the essentials to make it work. Uh, we have a decision tree, which is a printable desktop decision map. What I've tried to do here is download all the decisions that I make, uh, which are yes or no statements. Has this happened? Great. Do this. That's what the decision tree is. It's an algorithm. It's a systematic approach. It helps me to say this condition has been met. Take this action. And that's what I want for my own trading first. And it turns out that a lot of people do actually want that for themselves as well. Uh, the TTE management system, uh, that's a part of the decision tree. It's the real secret to success. It tells me what to do, when to do it, why I'm doing it, um, so that I'm not wondering if I should be doing anything. I hate that uncertainty in my own trading. Uh, so that was my solution to have robust and mechanical and methodical decisions. Uh, you'll also see what I'm trading every day. Um, I put what I'm doing in spreadsheets uh, that we uh, you'll be able to see over my shoulder with the entries, the exits, the stops, targets, all the things that we went through and gave you an example of earlier. And of course, you have direct access to me through our community um, and get that direct support that you need when you need. So between the sessions on the Monday and the Wednesday, you'll have uh, the ability to, uh, that all my students do, you know, you can message me anytime. Um, if it's trading related and it needs a more detailed response, more than likely I'll do a video response. Uh, but often I can just refer you to uh, the most appropriate action relative to the question that you have. As always, I promise everyone that you won't be zombie trading. You won't be spending hours flicking through charts. We just want to be zeroing in, finding the best opportunities and placing the trades. That's how I do it. That's how I want to do it. It allows me to do these sessions. It allows me to bugger off and ramble and go and do other things. And um, like I'm stepping quite literally after this session, I'm stepping away. I'm going to run some errands. I've got, I've got Costco to go to. I've got some uh, errands to run. The wife's given me a honeydew list. So I'm going to spend the rest of the day doing my honeydew list. But ultimately, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm going to uh, you know, place the trades. I've done my management. I've put my trades on for the week. I won't be reading boring company reports. And I'm not you know, worrying about what the markets are doing because everything's taken care of. We should just be able to profit in up and down markets. Uh, my trades last about 20 to 30 days and potentially up to 90 days in any market condition. And um, it's all powered by uh, pro production line training. That gets me the results. That's why I've been here for 27 years uh, now. We're almost in my 28th full-time year. Uh, again, I've been doing this since the mid-90s. So if you'd like to be involved in that, um, you know, you can hear it straight from some of my past students. Uh, the production line trading uh, is a systematic approach. Joe Fear, renowned podcaster, investor, entrepreneur, has some very nice words. He took time out to interview me a few years ago. Uh, Alex Singal, famed author as well. Uh, he rarely pitches anyone, but he wants to hear because I'm that good. And a local musician, famous local museum uh, mu musician. Um, I, I think that the thing that 
I like about his comments here. It, it's great fun. I try and enjoy myself when I'm doing this. I mean, it is a bloody boring subject, this, um, but I do try and have fun. Uh, it's also backed up with uh, data. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, science and research behind this. I always joke that I'm a poor farm boy, but I, you know, the reality is that there's a lot of numbers and research and algorithms has gone into the simplicity that you have today. Um, it was over a 20 year journey to get to where we are so that you don't have to have a 20 year journey to get to where you are. You could just plug into the production line and get the results. And that's the idea uh, here. So next steps, if you are still around and you are still interested, uh, I only want to work with highly motivated individuals who want to master swing trading stocks and make them the best possible trader that they can be. I didn't have anyone to help me when I started out. I made all the mistakes and it took me 27 years to figure it out. Um, and it's a crying shame because there is a faster route. So if you are serious about your trading, then let's, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so the next steps... Nick, where's my little slide? There we go. So next steps, if you are interested, I've got some extra information just to give you a little bit of an overview. I'm going to drop a link in the chat box. And if you want to take a look at it, you can do. Um, if you want to have a chat about it, send me a message. The best way to get in touch with me is via the, um, it's via the Slack group. There we go. And Kevin, awesome dude. You can just see Kevin's just posted counter trend swing trade on Zoom for 100% return on capital. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Well done. Um, Kevin, are you here? Actually, are you in the room today? Are you too busy trading and making money? <laughs> there we go. So um, the quick way to do is to get in touch with me. We've got, um, just click on my name. You can send me a direct message. If you want to have a little chat about it and you want to make sure that it is the right thing for you, uh, then let's do it. Let's talk. Let's have a little chat, let's hop on a call or have a little text chat, whatever your preference is. Let's figure out if it is the right thing to you. If it's not, I'll always point you off in the right direction. Um, but if it is and you want to go further, then I will uh, be doing the next uh, session on Monday. Uh, we've got full uh, quick start training. It's already recorded. I spent most of yesterday doing it so that we can plug into the production line and start looking for trades as of uh, Monday for you. So you can maximize your results, time and experience and all the things that we've just spoken about. Okay. Well done, Kevin. Well done. Awesome trading. Cool. 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 I like it. So um, what next? Click the link, follow the instructions. Um, if you, there's a very, very short 12 minutes uh, video if you want to have a look at it. There's basically, it says all the same things that we've got here, uh, but you'll be over the shoulder. We've got a quick start blueprints. We've got a decision tree. Um, you know, all the decisions that we could do, could make mapped out. Um, the trade management, that's, I know I always jokingly say it, but it is the real secret to success. Most of the decisions that we actually make, let me just get my spreadsheets up. Most of the decisions that we make are based on uh, the spreadsheet. This is what you'll get access to as well. Uh, you'll be able to see what I'm trading as I'm trading it, uh, anything that we're looking at, any trading, we're make, uh, any trading decisions that we're making. Um, one of the ones that I actually sent out to uh, you in the, the general list is SWIR. Maybe we just go and take a look at that, actually. So you get to see the, the stocks that we're trading um, as we're doing it with the entries, the exit stops and targets. It's just a few days ago. Let's take a look at SWIR. So I posted this out. So there we go. So it's not quite taken off like a rocket, but nonetheless, you can follow along at SWIR, Sierra Wireless. If you'd like to follow along, feel free to do it. And if you're uncertain, follow along a little bit longer. Uh, but nonetheless, if you'd like to talk about it, let's talk. If not, don't worry about it. I'll see you all at the same time, the same place next week.